So this warm up is going to take us right into the lesson, actually. Uh, three squared, if I'm trying to equal zero, right? Three squared equals nine. What else equals nine? And this is going to be a big deal. In your calculator, it has to be written like this in parentheses. Your calculator reads this different. Your calculator reads this as the opposite of three squared, which is negative nine. So don't type it like that in your calculator. I don't know if you noticed, but I always substitute in parentheses when I write it down. Have you guys noticed that? Like every time almost, I'm substituting in parentheses. This is one of the reasons why. It will not pump out the positive answer because it reads this as the opposite of three squared, which is negative nine. This is the way you write negative three squared. Okay, so that one's false. There's two answers, three and negative three. Next one up, true or false? This is false, y'all. So here's why. If I try to subtract 25 from both sides, something squared needs to equal negative 25. Can I square any number and get a negative? No. No, because let's say you try negative 5. Guess what negative 5 squared is? 25. So it's not negative 25. You can't square root a negative because something times itself is always positive. You could. Yeah, but you can't square something to get negative 25. Anything times itself is positive because positive times positive is positive. Negative times negative is positive. I subtracted 25 from both sides, 0 minus 25. But you can just prove it like this. You can't get a negative 25 from this. Okay. That's good. Cool. Next one. Next one. True or false? This has two solutions, true or false, go. The answer to this is? Yes. True. Yup. It's not right unless you said yup, okay? But no. X can be zero or seven to make it true yeah. because of the ZPP, ZPP, zero product property. Okay. Next one, true or false? My computer, I know it's lagging on me. Okay, these solutions work, true or false? The answer is? Nope. Oops. No. Nope. Yes. Here, it would be kind of right, kind of, still not perfect, if it was set equal to yeah. zero. But this isn't zero. This is 12. There's like several combinations to get to 12, right? It's the zero product property, not the 12 product property, right? So, could we make it a zero over there somehow, though? Yeah, you could change the sum to a negative sum. We could do this. Now, this isn't necessarily easy, easy, but if we could get this to equal 12, 12 minus 12 would be zero. We could still like, we could still kind of do something. Maybe, maybe. Just something to consider. We can set this equal to zero, and that would allow us to see where y is zero. Hack the system, baby. So, we'll be going to, we're going to be going back between this and decimals to just look at some stuff. All right. Hans is solving these three equations and what do you notice is different about the second and third kind of like when we looked at the warm-up too what's different about that second and third Greta the solution isn't zero, the solution isn't zero which means it's the zero product property is not an option then right because they're not multiplying to be zero so this first one totally can who can raise your hand and tell me the intercepts just looking at the first one James five three. yeah five and three and both of those answers would give us a zero for one of the terms, A or B, right? For the zero product property, which means the whole thing's zero because zero times junk is zero. Okay. Now the second one, look what they did. That's a negative one on the right side. This one says plus one on the other side. What did they do? They added they one. Plus two. They added one here. Oh. Well, kind of, and they added one there. But they did the same thing to both sides, which we know means it's still true. Okay. So this is the second equation solved for zero, right? So... We're going to graph it on Desmos over here, and we're going to see what this one looks like, okay? okay? In your head right now, I'd like you to make a guess. How many times is it going to cross the x-intercept? Zero. So just in your head, make a guess. So, yeah, I can get rid of this, and do you see? Actually, let's get rid of that. Equals zero. You notice that this function crosses the x-intercept how many times? One. Once. So guess how many solutions there are to this problem? One. And what is that solution? Four. 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 Zero. Four, zero. So that point that I had highlighted, four, zero, let's check it out. When x is four, I get 
negative 1 times 1 plus 1, which is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. zero. So when x is 4, one. y is 0. There's no other answer. I want you to notice the shape of this. Where's the vertex? Right on the x-axis. So how many times is it crossing? Once. It's just touching. Okay? Do you remember on that quiz, there was that question like, how many times does a parabola have to cross the x? And some, a bunch of you said two times. Here, one time. All right? Where did you get the one in the middle from? Wait. Four minus five, negative one. Oh. Four minus three, one. Oh. And then the plus one was there. All right, cool? Should we Yeah, I'd be writing that. There's one answer to this. That, this is the big idea. The big idea, what you're going to want to write down is, this function looks like this graph, and it crosses the x one time. This function matches this graph, and it crosses one time. That's the big idea right here, OK? OK. OK, so let's look at this one now. We're on the third one. So you guys, I think you remember, this first one crossed twice, something like this, right? We picked them up. This one crossed once. So it just touched one spot. Those are the two we looked at, right? This one was five three, and three. So we're on the third one now. Now the third one, we keep setting it equal to zero to look for how many times it crosses. How am I going to get that one equal to zero, that third one? What am I going to do to both sides? I need to get rid of that minus four. Oh, add four. Okay. So if I add four, add four we get x minus five times x minus three plus four equals zero. Everybody seeing that these are the same, I hope? Okay, now we're gonna graph and see what's up, okay? So we're gonna head to Desmos, minus five minus three plus four. So this is cool, we were below, we moved up to the x by doing the plus one. Let's see what happens now. Whoa. How many times is this one crossing? Zero. It isn't crossing, so guess what? Zero. <laughs> no solution. Zero is a number. Zero is a solution. If it looked like this, guess what? Zero is the solution. For real. This is no solution. It doesn't cross. It doesn't touch. All right? Okay. Okay. Hey, do you know which parabola this one doesn't like? No this one. one, you know why? Because this one double crosses. I just made that up right now. Yeah. On the spot, baby. There we go. Double crossed. To, to kind of let go, the two solution thing kind of looked like this. Something like this, right? One, two. The double crosser, as we just established. The one solution thing. Wow, that was a nice scribble. Something like this. It just, it, this one does. Okay, you make a dot big enough, it does. All right, Sam? Touches just barely on the axis. The vertex is on the axis. And right, it could be flipped up or down. It doesn't matter. That's one. And two, ind two independently. And then no solution is where, you know, you start above and you just go up. Or you start below and you just go down. And you never cross it. Wait. All right. Can it be on one side? Oh, like no solution could look like this. Yeah. 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 Uh -oh. Yep. It just never crosses. That, those are some good big ideas to have in here. Okay. You guys want that back? Yeah. Baby, come back. Okay. Here they are. Two solutions. One solution. No solution. It's all about how many times it crosses the x-axis. That's why that one question on the last quiz that said it always has two. Does it always have two? No, because sometimes it has one or not. Sometimes it's double crossed. Okay. I want you to do your best to come up with how many solutions each one of these have. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can use Desmos. We'll throw these up on Desmos. Try without. But these ones right here, you do not need Desmos for. These ones right here, you do not need Desmos for. And actually, this one here, you don't need Desmos for either. I'll, do, I'll Desmos these ones. Okay? I'll Desmos these ones. Get after it. You can work with your table partner or independent. We're going to go over all the non-Desmos ones. Here we go. For number one, it can be 11 and negative 11. So two answers. Which means it's going to look like this, right? Problem two. I can add 31 to both sides. 
If x squared is 36, guess what? 6 and negative 6. Looking like that. 3. Number 3. Looks like this. X equals 4 is the only spot. One solution. One solution? Yeah. Okay. Yep, 2, 2, 1. I didn't. X can be 4. 0 times something is 0. Oh, we're on number 5 now. I'm going to square root both sides. Guess what? We're, we're skipping 4 because I'm going to go to decimals. Can we square root a negative? So number 5 looks something like this. Okay? Man, I'm drawing just real pretty things today. Okay. Number five looks like this. Five has no solutions. Okay, we're going to go four and six next. But before we go and do those on Desmos. Number five is no, no solution. None. You can't square root a negative. There's nothing times itself that equals negative four. Okay. Now, we're looking at these two on decimals in a moment. But to make them decimals ready, we're going to practice zeroing them out because zero is where the x-axis is. So how do I get this to be zero? Minus five. Minus five. So I'm going to use this function, which is the same function. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use, and then how am I going to zero this out? How to get rid of that 990? So I've got this. We're going to go to decimals. Okay. I want you to make a prediction of how many answers there are, okay? Make a prediction in your head before we go to decimals. Make a prediction. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out to you how I knew these had two solutions before I even did decimals, okay? So um, one, one nice number to find is actually the, the y-intercept, right? Okay? So you can kind of see, like, I'm starting below here. When x is 0, which this isn't perfect, but when x is 0, I got 3 times negative 1 minus 5. That's negative 8. So I know my y-intercept is negative 8, so I know it's below. And how is it opening, up or down? Uh, so like I kind of knew things just looking at it, but Desmos is what we get to use. So both of these have how many answers? Two. 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 They both have two, okay? And just know we zeroed these out by doing the opposite thing to get zero alone, because when it, y is zero, that tells us where it's crossing the x. That's how we're getting solutions, okay? All right. I got a little lesson summary for you. I always wish, the iPad doesn't let me hit the right tab. It like. Here we go.